What is an asymptotic curve? On a graph, a line that approaches close to a curve, or even an axis, but never quite reaches it is an asymptotic curve. In an example similar to one of Zeno's paradoxes, see Foundations of Mathematics. If a kitten standing a yard from a box walks half the distance to the box each hour, it will technically never reach the box. Because the distance it travels each hour is never more than half the remaining distance to the box. If this problem was illustrated as an equation, the answer would never quite reach its solution. A more mathematical example is the exponential function y equals 2x, which results in a line that approaches but will never quite reach the x-axis. What is a slide rule? The slide rule is a ruler-like device with logarithmic scales that allows the user to do mathematical calculations. It is portable, with the most common slide rules using three interlocking calibrated strips. The central strip can be moved back and forth relative to the other two. Calculations are performed by aligning marks on the central strip with marks on the fixed strips. Then reading marks on the strips. There is also a see-through sliding cursor with a hairline mark perpendicular to the scales. Allowing the user to line up numbers on all the scales. Sadly for mathematical traditionalists. The use of the slide rule was eventually overtaken by the pocket calculator by the mid-1970s. But in other ways, this development was welcome. The slide rule had two major drawbacks, especially for calculations in mathematics, engineering, and the sciences, it was not easy to add with the device and it was only accurate to three digits. How long does it take for the sun's light to reach the Earth? Because the sun is an average of 93 million miles, 149,598,770 kilometers, from the Earth, and the speed of light is approximately 186,000 miles per second, it is easy to determine the approximate time. T, it takes for the sun's light to reach the earth using mathematics. T equals 93 million miles slash 186,000 miles per second equals 500 seconds, miles cancel each other out, equals 8 minutes How do clinical trials use mathematics Clinical trials are used to determine whether a new drug or treatment is safe and effective for the general public. In particular, there are several phases to reach a positive or negative conclusion about the drug or treatment. Phase I takes between 20 and 80 patients and determines the safety. Dosage range, or side effects, 
Phase 2 tests the drug or treatment on a larger group. Usually around 100 to 300 people, Phase 3 tests an even larger group of between 1,000 to 3,000 people. And Phase 4 takes place after the drug or treatment has been marketed and is in use. Overall, each phase has a mathematical theme. Each using statistics to determine the possible positive and negative effects of the drug or treatment. What is a conclusion in logic? A conclusion is a statement, proposition. Found by applying a set of logical rules, syllogisms, to a set of premises. In addition, the final statement of a proof is called the proof's conclusion. For example, in a statement that includes if, then. The result following the then in the statement is called the conclusion. What was the Principia Mathematica? In 1910 the first volume of the Principia Mathematica was published by Welsh. Mathematician and logician Bertrand Arthur William Russell. 1872-1970, and English mathematician and philosopher Alfred North Whitehead, 1861-1947. This book was an attempt to put mathematics on a logical foundation. Developing logic theory as a basis for mathematics. It gave detailed derivations of many major theorems in set theory. Examined finite and transfinite arithmetic, and presented elementary measure theory. The two mathematicians published three volumes, but the fourth, on geometry, was never completed. On their own, both men did a great deal to advance mathematics, too. Russell discovered the Russell Paradox, see below. Introduced the theory of types, and popularized first-order predicate calculus. Russell's logic consisted of two main ideas, that all mathematical truths can be translated into logical truths or that the vocabulary of mathematics constitutes a proper subset of the vocabulary of logic. And that all mathematical proofs can be recast as logical proofs. Or that the theorems of mathematics constitute a proper subset logical theorems. Whitehead excelled not only in mathematics and logic but also in the philosophy of science and study of metaphysics. In mathematics, he extended the known range of algebraic procedures, and he was a prolific writer. In philosophy, he criticized the traditional theories for their lack of integrating the direct relationship between matter, space, and time, thus he created a vocabulary of his own design, which he called the philosophy of organism. What is Russell's paradox? Russell's paradox is one of the most famous of the set theory paradoxes. It first appears when studying the naive set theory, in this case, 
R is the set of all sets that are not members of themselves. From there, R is neither a member of itself nor not a member of itself. The paradox sets becomes evident when one tries to reason how a set appears to be a member of itself if and only if it is not a member of itself. Discovered by Welsh mathematician and logician Bertrand Arthur William Russell 1872 to 1970, in 1901, the paradox sparked a great deal of work, and controversy. In logic, set theory, and especially in philosophy and foundations of mathematics. The reason why it became so important was its effect on mathematics. It created problems for those who based mathematics on logic. And it also indicated that something was wrong with George Cantor's intuitive set theory. For more about Russell and the paradox, see History of Mathematics. What are the odds when playing craps? Craps is probably the most popular game of chance in the world, it is also illegal to play in many places. But it has a long history, it was played in ancient Greece and Rome and was even a mainstay of some old 1930s and 40s movies. Craps can be played using a wall and a pair of dice. It is a popular casino game in places such as Las Vegas and even on the internet with betting on craps involving a complex equation. Its popularity no doubt comes from its simplicity. In craps, a player throws two dice, their number, roll, is the total of the dots on the top faces of the dice. If the initial roll is a 7 or 11, called a natural, the player wins. If the number 2, 3, or 12 comes up called craps the player loses, but keeps the dice. If the sum of the dice adds up to the number 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, or 10, that number becomes the thrower's point. The player then continues to shoot until he or she throws the point number again. In which case the gambler wins and retains the dice. But if the player shoots a sum of 7 before he or she can roll the point value, he or she loses and gives the dice to the next player. Craps is truly a game of chance, with the probability mathematics of craps. Fairly straightforward. For example, take the probability of winning on a roll-by-roll -roll basis. In which p, p equals n, is the probability of rolling a point n. The resulting numbers show that the probability of winning is 244-495. Or the shooter wins about 49.2929% of the time. Did Einstein's theories change our concept of dimensions? Yes. Our ideas about dimensions changed dramatically thanks to Einstein's theories. Not to mention the mathematics involved in producing those theories. In particular, one can't distinguish space and time as elements in the description of events. Instead, 
they are joined in what is called the fourth dimension also. Called a four-dimensional manifold known as space-time, see above. Although it sounds like something out of the television show Star Trek. In space-time events in the universe are described in terms of the four-dimensional continuum. Simply put, each observer locates an event by three space-like coordinates. Positions, and one time-like coordinate. The choice of the time-like coordinate in space-time is not unique. Hence, time is not absolute but is relative to the observer. The strange effects go on, in general, events at different locations that are simultaneous for one observer will not be simultaneous for another observer. For more information about dimensions, see geometry and trigonometry. What are unit fractions and how are they tied to ancient Egypt? A unit fraction is one that has a numerator of 1, such as 1 half, 1 fourth, and 1 slash 43545. One of the earliest discussions of unit fractions a table of representations of 1 slash n was found on the famous Rhind papyrus. Also called the Rhind mathematical papyrus, dated to around 1650 BCE. This record A table copied by the Egyptians from another papyrus dated 200 years. Earlier represented a sum of distinct unit fractions for odd n numbers between 5 and 101. To write a certain fraction, they would add combinations of 1 slash n. For example, instead of writing 2 fifths, they wrote one third plus one fifteenth, for two twenty ninths, they wrote one twenty fourth plus one fifty eighth plus one slash one seventy four plus one slash two thirty two. Because of the Rhind papyrus discovery, the sums of unit fractions are now called Egyptian fractions. No one truly knows why the Egyptians chose this method for representing fractions. But some historians believe it was a wrong turn in Egyptian mathematical history. Whatever the reason, the Egyptians, apparently successfully, used this system for 2000 years. For more information about the Rhind papyrus, see History of Mathematics. What are the definitions of chance? Chance is defined in many ways. For example, chance means opportunity to some, or the chance to do something. Chance can also mean luck or fortune. Such as running into someone one has not seen in years by pure chance. Chance also involves taking a risk, which may include some type of danger. Mathematically speaking, chance is a measure of how likely it is that an event will occur in other words, a probability. For example, if a meteorologist says that a hurricane on a certain path has struck the coast of Florida, say, about 4 times out of 10, then the ratio becomes 4 to 10. With the chance of striking under the same conditions being 40%.
Why was mathematics so important to the Greeks? With a numbering system in place and knowledge from the Babylonians, the Greeks became masters of mathematics, with the most progress taking place between the years of 300 BCE and 200 CE. Although the Greek culture had been in existence long before that time, the Greeks changed the nature and approach to math. And they considered it one of the if not the most important subjects in science. The main reason for their proclivity towards mathematics is easy to understand. The Greeks preferred reasoning over any other activity. Mathematics is based on reasoning. Unlike many scientific endeavors that require experimentation and observation. How can one visualize Pascal's triangle using algebra? One way of looking at Pascal's triangle is through its connection to algebra. For example, expand, or remove the brackets around, the expression, 1 plus x, 2 equals, 1 plus x, 1 plus x, equals 1 plus 2x plus x2. The same can be done with a cube, for example, 1 plus x, 3 equals, 1 plus x, 1 plus x, 1 plus x, equals, 1 plus x. 1 plus 2x plus x2, equals 1 plus 3x plus 3x2 plus x3, and even the expression, 1 plus x, 4, which equals 1 plus 4x plus 6x2 plus 4x3 plus x4. The coefficients. The numbers in front of the x's, in the results are the connection. For the first example, the coefficients are 1, 2, 1, for the second one. 1, 3, 3, 1, and for the last expression, the coefficients are 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. These. Of course, are the third fourth and fifth lines from Pascal's triangle. What was one of the first devices used to measure time? One of the first devices smaller than the obelisks mentioned above to measure time was a crude sundial. By about 1500 BCE, the true, small sundial, or shadow clock, was developed in Egypt. It was divided into ten parts, with two twilight hours marked. But it could only tell time for half a day, afternoon. The sundial had to be turned 180 degrees to measure the afternoon hours. More refinements of measuring time occurred later. In order to correct for the sun's changing path over the sky throughout the year. The nomonor object that creates the shadow on the sundial had to be set at the correct angle, what we call latitude. Eventually, the sundial was perfected. Multiple designs were used. For example, shortly before 27 BCE the Roman architect Marcus Vitruvius Pollios, c. 90-20 BCE, de Architectura described 13 different designs of sundials.
What types of mathematics are used in engineering? Mathematics is definitely a necessity in engineering. Especially the fields of algebra, geometry, calculus, and statistics. Certain divisions of engineering rely on variations of mathematics. Including combinations of arithmetic, algebra, geometry, calculus, differential equations. Probability and statistics, complex analysis, and others. For example, civil and structural engineers use a great deal of linear algebra and work with matrices. Mechanical engineers use logs and exponents, calculus, differential equations, and probability, and statistics. And a chemical engineer uses such mathematics as algebra and geometry. Logs and exponents, integral calculus, and differential equations. What are the basic symbols used to operate on sets? When set theory founder George Cantor developed the symbols for sets, he used a single horizontal overbar to denote a set with no structure besides order, thus, it represented the order type of the set. A double bar meant that there was no order from the set, which is also called the cardinal number of the set, see below. What is a currency exchange rate? When traveling to another country, it is important to know the currency exchange rate, which is the value of a traveler's home currency compared to the currency of the country being visited. For example, like all currency, the US dollar fluctuates daily when compared to other countries' currencies. If you travel to Canada, and the US dollar can buy $1.40 Canadian dollars, then the exchange rate is 1.40 to 1. If you go to New Zealand, and the US dollar exchange rate is 0.5477, then one New Zealand dollar is worth 54.77 US cents. How does one convert latitude and longitude to degrees from readings containing degrees? Minutes, and seconds? It takes simple mathematics to convert the degrees, minutes, and seconds of latitudes and longitudes into degrees only. It helps to know that there are 60 seconds in one minute, and 60 minutes in one degree. Therefore, to translate 65 degrees 45 minutes 36 also written as 65 hours 45 minutes and 36 seconds, south latitude into degrees you would do the following calculation, minus 65 degrees, south makes the number negative, plus 45 minutes x, 1 degree slash 60, plus 36 seconds x, 1 slash 60, x, 1 degree slash 60, equals minus 65.76 degrees latitude.
What is a circle? A circle is one of the most fundamental shapes in geometry and one shape we commonly see every day. For mathematicians, a circle is defined as a set of points. On a plane at a certain distance from a center point. In reality, a circle is a polygon with an infinite number of sides. The distance of a line segment from the center to the points on the circle is called the radius. Or a line segment whose endpoints are on any point on the circle and its center. A line segment that travels from one endpoint on the circle, through the radius. Center of the circle, and to another endpoint directly opposite is called the diameter. 2 times the radius of a circle is the diameter. The outer perimeter of the circle is called the circumference. The chord of a circle is a line segment whose two endpoints are on the circle. Concentric circles are two or more circles that lie in the same plane and have the same center. But with different radii. Circles with the same radius are called congruent circles. For more about circle measurements, see elsewhere in this chapter. What is congruence? In reference to numbers, congruence is the property of two integers. Having the same remainder upon division by another integer. The term also is often used in geometry to describe a property of geometric formations. For more information about congruence in geometry, see Geometry and Trigonometry. Still another way of using congruence is in number theory. In which modular arithmetic is the arithmetic of congruences, which is sometimes informally called clock arithmetic. What were some highlights in the development of modern computers? The first general-purpose analog computer was designed in 1930 by American scientist Vannevar Bush. 1890-1974, who built a mechanically operated device called a differential analyzer. The first semi-electronic digital computing device was built by mathematician and physicist John Vincent Atanasoff. 1903-1995, and one of his graduate students, Clifford E. Berry, 1918-1963, between 1937 and 1942. It was created. Primarily to solve large systems of simultaneous linear equations. It is interesting to note that Atanasov's computer was overshadowed by the electronic numerical integrator and computer. Anayak, see below, which was once credited as the first computer. In 1973, however, a federal judge recognized Atanasov's work and voided Sperry Iran's patent on the Anayak. Saying it had been derived from Atanasov's invention. Today, Atanasov and Barry get the credit. The Harvard Mark I, or the Automatic Sequence Controlled Calculator, was built between 1939 and 1944 by American computer scientist Howard H. Aiken, 
1900-1973. And his team. It is thought of as the first large-scale automatic digital computer. But there are disagreements about this, with some historians believing that. German engineer Konrad Zuss C3, C above, was the first such machine. Other early computers were the ENIAC 1 and the UNIVAC. The ENIAC, Electronic Numerical Integrator and Calculator, was completed in 1946 at the University of Pennsylvania, it used the sands of vacuum tubes until 1973. It was thought of as the first semi-electronic digital computer. That credit was subsequently given to Atanasov and Berry, see above. The UNIVAC, Universal Automatic Computer was built in 1951 and was the first computer to handle both numeric and alphabetic data. It also was the first commercially available computer. The third generation integrated circuit machines were used primarily during the mid 1960s and 1970s. Making the computers smaller, faster, close to a million operations per second, and far more reliable. The first commercial microprocessor was the Intel 4004 which appeared in 1971. It could only add and subtract. And it was used to power one of the first portable electronic calculators. The real push in microprocessors came during the late 1970s to 1990s. Allowing for increasingly smaller and more powerful computers. For example, in 1974 the Intel 8080 processor had a clock speed of 2 MHz. MHz, by 2004 the Pentium 4, Prescott, had a clock speed of 3.6 GHz, GHz. Computers that use microprocessors include the Personal Computer and Personal Digital Assistant, PDA. The computer industry has continued rapid growth. Mainly thanks to the increased performance of advanced microprocessors. How is wind measured? Wind speed is the measurable motion of air with respect to the surface of the Earth. It is measured in terms of a unit distance over a unit time, such as miles per hour. The wind direction is also an indication of the wind's source. For example, a southerly wind means the wind is blowing. Toward north it is coming from a southerly direction. What is a dog's and cat's age equivalent compared to a human? All animals age at different rates, and our domestic dogs and cats are no exception. Unlike humans, these pets seem to age more rapidly in terms of human years. With both animals being of an age equivalent to about 15 human years by the time they are one year old. There are, however, some differences for dogs. Some people have determined an age range depending on the size of the animal. For example, a dog over 90 pounds may only be equivalent to 12 human years by the time it is one year old. 
A dog 51 to 90 pounds is about 14 human years old when it is 1 year old. And dogs under 50 pounds are the equivalent of 15 human years by their first year. These age differences are reflected for the entire life of the dog. Below is a simplified table illustrating dog and cat years and their human age equivalents. Blood carries oxygen to the heart, and if there is less blood, and thus, less oxygen, reaching the heart, chest pain can result. If there is a near complete or complete blockage that cuts off the blood supply to a portion of the heart, a heart attack, myocardial infarction, is often the result. This is why most doctors recommend watching your numbers for total cholesterol, HDL, and LDL for signs of any change. What is orbital mechanics? Orbital mechanics, also called flight mechanics, is the study of the motions of artificial satellites and space vehicles moving under the influence of forces such as gravity, atmospheric drag, thrust, and so on. It is a modern spin-off of celestial mechanics. Or the study of the motions of planetary and celestial bodies. One of the main scientists who built the foundations of orbital mechanics was mathematician Isaac Newton. 1642-1727, who put forth his laws of motion and formulated the law of universal gravitation. For more about Newton, see History of Mathematics and Mathematical Analysis. For more about Newton's laws, see Mathematics in the Physical Sciences. Today's aerospace engineers apply orbital mechanics to such problems as rocket and spacecraft trajectories. Re-entry and landing of space vehicles, rendezvous computations, such as the Space Shuttle to the International Space Station and lunar and interplanetary trajectories for manned and unmanned vehicles. What are some mathematical concepts used in demography? Demography is the statistical study of human populations that reveals the characteristics of the population. This includes such factors as size, density, growth, distribution, and vital statistics. Some common demographic statistics include birth and death rates, life expectancy, and infant mortality rates. The birth rate, also called the crude birth rate, is usually represented in demography. As the ratio of live births in an area population annually. Most often expressed as the annual number of live births per 1000 people, or a time division, such as at mid-year. Related to this is the infant mortality rate which is the annual number of deaths of children less than one year old per 1,000 live births. The death rate, or crude death rate, refers to the ratio of deaths in an area population annually. It is often expressed as the annual number of deaths per 1,000 people. Life expectancy is related to death rate and indicates the average lifespan of people within a certain population. 
it is calculated on the basis of statistical probabilities. Usually represented by the average number of years a group of people born in the same year can be expected to live. If mortality at each age remains constant in the future. What do cholesterol numbers mean? Cholesterol numbers indicate the amount of cholesterol in the bloodstream, cholesterol is a waxy fat-like substance manufactured in the liver and found in all tissues. For humans, a total cholesterol number above 200 means there is an increase in the risk of heart disease. Between 200 and 239 is considered borderline high cholesterol. For anything below 200, there is less of a risk for heart disease. But total cholesterol is not the only number to know. There is also low-density lipoprotein, LDL, or bad cholesterol. LDL is the main source of the buildup and blockage in the arteries. Risk levels are above 130, measured in milligrams per deciliter. There is also high-density lipoprotein, HDL, the good cholesterol that helps keep the plaque from building up. Risk levels are below 40, measured in milligrams per deciliter. When there is too much cholesterol in the blood, it can build up on the walls of the arteries. Over time, the buildup, often called plaque, causes hardening of the arteries. Or a narrowing of the arteries that restricts or stops blood flow to the heart. What is computational ecology? Computational ecology can be considered a subset of environmental modeling. Because it addresses practical questions arising from environmental problems using mathematics. For example, in the field of ecotoxicology. Mathematical models are used to predict the effects of environmental pollutants on populations. Natural resource management uses mathematics to set quotas for fish and game. And conservation ecologists use mathematical models to determine the effects of various recovery plans for threatened species, and even to design nature preserves. How did the Hindu Arabic numerals spread to Europe? Hindu Arabic numerals often less accurately called Arabic numerals or numbers. Had their roots in India before 300 BCE. From there, the use of Indian numerals followed the western trade routes to Spain and northern Africa that were taken by the Arabic-Islamic peoples, this consequently resulted in the expanded use of these symbols. It took several more centuries to spread the idea to Europe. Although the Spanish used some Hindu-Arabic symbols as early as the late 900s. Records of a more extensive use of these symbols occurred around 1202. Italian mathematician Leonardo of Pisa. Also known as Fibonacci. C1170 C1250, 
For more about Fibonacci, CP. 77 and History of Mathematics Introduced the Hindu Arabic numbers in his book Liberabasi, the book of the Abacus. The acceptance of such a numbering system was difficult. For example, in some places in Italy it was forbidden to use anything but Roman numerals. By the late 15th century, most people in Europe were still using an abacus and Roman numerals. The 16th century was the turning point, with European traders, surveyors, bookkeepers, and merchants spreading the use of the Hindu Arabic numerals. After all, it took longer to record data using Roman numerals than with Hindu Arabic numbers. The advent of the printing press also helped by standardizing the way the Hindu Arabic numbers looked. By the 18th century, the new numeration system was entrenched. Establishing a system that dominates the way we work with and perceive numbers in the 21st century. For more information about Hindu Arabic and Roman numerals, see History of Mathematics. What are the rules for multiplying and dividing fractions? As to be expected, there are rules for multiplying and dividing fractions. Multiplication of fractions is very straightforward just multiply the numerators and denominators. Then simplify the resulting fraction, if needed, or if you can. For example, 2 fifths x 4 sevenths equals 2 x 4 slash 5 x 7 equals 8 30 fifths, this number can't be simplified. Division of fractions entails one main rule, you need to flip over, or invert, the divisor fraction. The fraction on the bottom, to get the result, this is also called the reciprocal of the fraction, see below. Here are the steps, first, change the division sign to a multiplication. Sign after inverting the fraction to the right of the sign. Multiply the numerators and denominators, and write the result. You can then simplify or reduce the fraction if needed. For example, 1 half o 1 fourth equals 1 half x 4 slash 1 equals 4 halves. This number can be simplified to 2. What is a series? A series is closely related to the sum of numbers. It is actually used to help add numbers, therefore. In a sequence it can be the indicated sum of that sequence. In general, the idea is to start with a number, then do something to that number to get the next number. Then do the same to that number to get the next number and so on. For example, a finite series with 6 terms is 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10 plus 12. In which 2 is added to each number to get the next number. How does a person determine the odds in horse racing? The track makes its money in a certain mathematical way, 
when the odds of the horse race are converted to probabilities. They usually add up to more than one, giving the track the advantage. For example, say a race track has 12 races with 4 horses, and the odds of winning each race are as follows. Note, race tracks don't use the same horse in each race this example is for illustrative purposes only. Horse 1-1 1, -1, 1 probability equals chances for, 1, slash total chances, 1 plus 1, equals 1 half or 6 twelfths horse 2-2 1, 1 slash, 1 plus 2, equals 1 third or 4 twelfths horse 3 3 colon 1, 1 slash, 1 plus 3, equals 1 fourth or 3 twelfths horse 4 5 colon 1, 1 slash, 1 plus 5, equals 1 sixth or 2 twelfths if a person puts $1 bets on horse number 2, he or she would have to win 4 out of 12 races to break even. But note, all these numbers add up to 15 twelfths, or 1.25, a higher number than 1, so as long as no horse wins more than its probability, the house wins. There's another way of looking at this type of betting. In order for the gambler to do better than the track, he or she has to win 15 times in 12 races a physical and mathematical impossibility which is why the track always makes money. Of course, a gambler may bet on certain low probability horses that win more races than expected. Earning a few more dollars along the way, but don't bet on it. What is the integral calculus? The integral calculus is the part of the calculus that deals with integrals both the integral as the limit of a sum and the integral as the antiderivative of a function, see below for more information. In general, the integral calculus is the limit of a sum of elements in which the number of the elements increase without bound, while the size of the elements diminishes. It is also considered the second most important kind of limit in the calculus. The first being limits in association with derivatives. It was originally developed by using polygons to approximate areas of geometrically shaped objects such as circles. What is a statistic and a sample statistic? A statistic is the measure of the items in a random sample. A sample statistic is meant to give information about a specific population feature, or parameter. For example, if a sample mean is gathered for a set of data, that would provide information about the overall population mean. What do the order and degree of a differential equation mean? The order of a differential equation is simply the highest derivative that appears in the equation. The degree of a differential equation is the power of the highest derivative term. For more information about power, see Math Basics.
How else is the word algebra used? Algebra may be defined as the subjects of arithmetic and abstract algebra, but there are other meanings. These algebras involve vectors and matrices, the algebra of real numbers, complex numbers, and quaternions, an operator or factor that changes one vector into another. There are also those exotic algebras invented by mathematicians and usually named after the inventor with the majority not truly understood except, perhaps, by their creators. Are there differences between independent and dependent variables in mathematics and statistics? Yes, there are subtle differences between these two types of variables in mathematics and statistics. In mathematics, independent variables are those whose value determines the value of other variables. In statistics, they are a manipulated variable in an experiment. Or study whose presence or degree determines the change in the dependent variable. Dependent variables in mathematics are those variables whose value is determined by an independent variable. In statistics, they are the observed variables in an experiment or study. Whose changes are determined by the presence or degree of one or more independent variables. For more information about variables in statistics, see Applied Mathematics. What is the identity matrix? The identity matrix is the n by n matrix that has all ones down the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else, it must also be a square. What is a percent? A percent, using the symbol percent, is the ratio of one number to another. Percents are quantitative terms in which n percent of a number is n one hundredths of the number. They are usually expressed as the equivalent ratio of some number to the number 100. For example, the ratio of 25 to 50 means the number 25 is 50% of 50. They are not true numbers. Thus, percents can't be used in calculations, such as addition or multiplication. But operations can be conducted with percents when they are translated into ratios and fractions. Such as 25% is equal to 0.25 or 1 fourth. What are the rules for combining logarithms? There are certain rules for combining logarithms. In the following cases. Let a be a positive number that does not equal zero, n is a real number, and u and v are positive real numbers. Logarithmic rule 1, loga, uv, equals loga, u, plus loga, v. Logarithmic rule 2, loga, u slash v, equals loga, u. Loga, V. 
n logarithmic rule 3, loga, u, equals n loga, u, this can be expressed as follows, in rule 1. Multiplication inside the log is turned into addition outside the log, and vice versa, in rule 2. Division inside the log is turned into subtraction outside the log, and vice versa, and in rule 3. An exponent on anything inside the log can be moved to the front of the log as a multiplier, and vice versa. But remember, these rules only apply if the bases are the same. For example, because the bases are not the same in loga, u, plus log, v, this expression can't be simplified. What is an algebraic structure? An algebraic structure is made up of a set, collection of objects called elements, for more information about sets. See Foundations of Mathematics, together with one or more operations on the set that satisfy certain axioms. The algebraic structures get their names depending on the operations and axioms. For example, algebraic structures include fields, groups, and rings. As well as many other structures with strange names such as loops, monoids, groupoids, semi-groups, and quasi-groups. The following lists only a few, how do quantum physicists regard light waves? Added to the mix of the mathematically rich quantum theory was an idea developed by French physicist. Prince Louis Victor Pierre Raymond de Broglie, 1892-1987, who discovered the wave nature of electrons and of particles in general. And also devised a mathematical explanation of the kinetic theory of heat. He determined that not only do light waves often exhibit particle-like properties, but particles also often exhibit wave-like properties. This opened a kin of quantum worms. From there, two different formulations of quantum mechanics developed. First was the wave mechanics of Austrian physicist Erwin Schrödinger, 1887-1961, who used a mathematical entity. The wave function, related to the probability of finding a particle in space at a given point. Schrödinger also developed a model of the atom that differed from the traditional Niels Bohr model. Second and mathematically equal to Schrödinger's theory was the matrix. Mechanics of German physicist Werner Karl Heisenberg, 1901-1976. Fluid mechanics This is the study of air, water, and other fluids in motion. It includes the mathematics of turbulence, wave propagation, and so on. Geophysics This is a geological study with a physics basis. Much of the field is dominated by the mathematics of large-scale movement of materials. Such as earthquakes, volcanic activity, and fluid mechanics, for example, underground molten volcanic material. Optics This is the mostly mathematical study of the propagation and evolution of electromagnetic waves, such as diffraction and the path of light rays. Optics requires a great knowledge of geometry and trigonometry, not to mention complex equations.
What is a linear equation? As the term suggests, linear equations have to do with lines, and in algebra. A linear equation means certain equations, or functions, whose graph is a line. For an extensive explanation of graphs, see geometry and trigonometry. More specifically, in algebra, a linear equation is one that contains simply the variable. Which makes them one of the simplest types of equations. For example, a linear equation in one variable has one unknown, the variable, represented by a letter. This letter, usually x, is always to the power of 1, meaning there is no x2 or x3 in the equation. For instance, x plus 3 equals 9 is a simple linear equation. To solve such an equation, one must either add, subtract, multiply, and slash or divide both sides of the equation by numbers and variables and do this in the correct order to end up with a solution. A single variable and single number on opposite sides of the equals sign. In this case, the solution to the linear equation is x equals 6. Finally, linear equations can be further broken down. For example, in the linear equation x plus by plus c z plus d w equals h, in which a, b, c, and d are known numbers and x, y, z, and w are unknown numbers, if h equals 0, the linear equation is said to be homogeneous. What are some simple probability events? The probability measure of an event is sometimes defined as the ratios between the number of outcomes. There are many simple illustrations of probability events, many of which we are all familiar with. One of the simplest examples of probability is tossing a coin. With a sample space of two outcomes, heads or tails. If a coin were completely symmetrical, the outcome would more likely be 0.5, ratio of one half, for heads and 0.5 for tails. As we all know, it never comes out that way. Which may or may not mean our coins are not in perfect balance. Another example is weather records. Many of us keep track of weather over the years. But if one were to gather all the records for the day of May 10th over 30 years from the weather service, one could do some simple probability event measurements. For example, take a, fictitious, sampling of the cloud-covered days in a certain area for the last 30 years on May 10th. Say there were 10 cloud-covered May 10s in 30 years. Thus, the probability measure would be a ratio of 10 thirtieths to the event that the Day will be cloudy on May 10th. Insurance tables are also figured out in a similar way. For example, if, out of a certain group of 1,000 persons who were 25 years old in 1900, 150 of them lived to be 65, then the ratio 150-1,000 is assigned as the probability that a 25-year-old person will live to be 65. On the other hand, 
the probability of such a person not living to be 65 is 850 slash 1 comma 0 0 0, because the sum of the two measures must be equal to 1. It is true that such a probability statement is valid only for a set group of people. But insurance companies get around this by using a much larger population sample and constantly revising the figures as new data are obtained. Thus, even though many people question the validity of such broad brush results, the insurance companies believe that, probability wise, the values they use are valid for most large groups of people and under most conditions of life. What is a polar coordinate system? In effect, a polar coordinate system wraps a two-dimensional, Euclidean, coordinate system onto the surface of a sphere. For more information about coordinate systems, see geometry and trigonometry. A polar coordinate system examines a point in space defined in terms of its position and distance on a sphere with a unit radius. The center of the sphere is considered the origin. The first two coordinates are the longitude and latitude on the sphere, the third coordinate defines the distance of the point from the center of the sphere the values of latitude, longitude, and height. In polar coordinates it's easy to see on a globe of our own planet latitude ranges from plus 90 to minus 90, longitude ranges from minus 180 to plus 180, and height ranges from zero to infinity. What is a field? A field is an algebraic structure that shares the common rules for operations. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, except division by zero. Of the rational, real, and complex numbers, but not integers, see below under ring. A field must have two operations, must have at least two elements and must be commutative, distributive, and associative, see above for definitions. Formerly called rational domain, a field in both French, core, and German, corpor, appropriately means body. A field with a finite number of members is called a galois or finite field. Fields are useful to define such concepts as vectors and matrices. Have computers been used to solve mathematical proofs? This idea was first presented in 1852 when Francis Guthrie 1831-1899 colored a map of English counties using only four colors. The idea of only four colors took on a mathematical bend and ended up being a theorem to be proved. It took until 1976, with the help of modern computers before the four-color conjecture was finally proven to be true. But some mathematicians are troubled by this computer proof. 
feeling that the theorem is so easy to understand that it should have been proven by hand. Thus, anyone who can prove the theorem without using a computer may win the Fields Medal. The Math Equivalent of the Nobel Prize Another proof solved with computers is the double bubble. The double bubble refers to a pair of bubbles that intersect. They are also separated by a membrane bounded by the intersection of the two bubbles. This is similar to two bubbles stuck together when a child blows bubbles using a water and soap mixture. Since the ancient Greeks, Mathematicians have worked on the problem of finding a mathematical proof of the efficiency of a single round bubble. The problem became even more rigorous when considering enclosing two bubbles or two separate volumes. The problem was solved around 1995 by mathematicians Joel Haas, Michael Hutchings, and Roger Schlafly. They used a computer to calculate the surface areas of the bubbles and found that the double bubble has a smaller area than any other when the enclosed volumes are the same. But this isn't the last word, scientists are currently working on triple bubbles. What are some of the common metric slash SI prefixes? The common metric and SI prefixes have been around for a while, but some were only recently added. In 1991, in order to apply standard units, SI units, see above, to a wide range of phenomena. Especially in the scientific world, the 19th General Conference on Weights and Measures lengthened the list to accommodate larger and smaller metric numbers with the list now reaching from Yate to Yakto Dash. Because it required the who were the Mesopotamians. The explanation of who the Mesopotamians were is not easy because there are many historians who disagree on how to distinguish Mesopotamians from other cultures and ethnic groups. In most texts, the label Mesopotamian refers to most of the unrelated peoples who used cuneiform. A way of writing numbers, see below including the Sumerians, Persians, and so on. They are also often referred to as Babylonians, after the city of Babylon, which was the center of many of the surrounding empires that occupied the fertile plain between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. But this area was also called Mesopotamia. Therefore, the more correct label for these people is probably Mesopotamians. In this text, Mesopotamians will be referred to by their various subdivisions. Because each brought new ideas to the numbering systems and, eventually, mathematics. These divisions include the Sumerians, Akkadians, and Babylonians. Memorization of so many signs The Sumerians also used base 10 like steps of a ladder between the various orders of magnitude. For example, the numbers followed the sequence 1, 60, 600, and 2, 603, and so on. Each one of the iterations had a specific name, making the numbering system extremely complex. 
no one truly knows why the Sumerians chose such a high base number. Theories range from connections to the number of days in a year. Weights and measurements, and even that it was easier to use for their purposes. Today, this numbering system is still visible in the way we tell time, hours, minutes, seconds, and in our definitions of circular measurements, degrees, minutes, seconds. What is the notation commonly used for series and sequences? When looking at a sequence and series, we need to distinguish between the ones we want to add, and the ones we do not want to add. The common symbol used for addition with a sequence or a series is the summation symbol. Seen as the symbol. When discussing a series, this symbol is used to mean the sum of numbers. Were the Greeks involved in geometry? The Greeks were known to have extensive knowledge of geometry, producing many great geometers. With this and other contributions in mathematics, the Greeks profoundly changed the approach and character of the entire mathematical field. It is thought that Thales of Miletus, c625 c550 BCE, Ionian, first introduced geometry to the Greeks. As a merchant traveler, he was exposed to the Babylonian concept of measurement, from which practices sprang geometry. Thales used his geometric knowledge to solve problems such as the height of the pyramids and the distance of ships from the shoreline. Greek geometer Hippocrates of Chios, 470-410 BCE, was one of the first to present an axiomatic approach to geometry. As well as the first to work on the elements almost a century before Euclid, see below. Hippocrates may have worked on geometry and such problems as squaring the circle. But he lacked common sense and was duped by many people. Zeno of Elia, C490 C425 BCE, raised questions about lines, points, and numbers, all part of geometry with his many paradoxes. For more information about Zeno and his paradoxes, see Foundations of Mathematics. Another important figure is Eudacus of Nidus, 408-355 BCE, who worked on geometric proportions and theories for determining areas and volumes. Others followed these geometers, including Archimedes, c. 287-212 BCE, Hellenic, who worked on mechanics and took the first steps toward integral calculus. Apollonius of Perga, 262-190 BCE, or the Great Geometer, first named and presented theories on conic sections in his book Conics. And he introduced the terms parabola, ellipse, and hyperbola. There was also Pupus of Alexandria, 290 to 350, who presented the basis for modern projective geometry, the geometry that deals with incidences. 
or whether elements such as lines, planes, and points coincide or not.